Weekend Deal, 6.30 a.m. to 9 a.m. Every Saturday and Sunday. Africa's biggest deal. Weekend Deal! Well, uh, trust me, after every show, we always look forward to another to share this moment, this experience with you, which are always wonderful. And uh, yes, a perfect time to welcome you to the studios of Weekend Deal, Africa's biggest deal. Now, I woke up with a thought about what I can do to, you know, advance the course of this nation. What about you? What are you doing, you know, to achieve same? Well, I know someone who is using that talent to project the image of Nigeria home and abroad. A soprano vocalist, uh, singer, one of the finest in Africa, Abiodun Koya. Does it ring a bell? Well, also on the show today, we are going to be talking about brain training. And Ruth, before now, sometimes I usually wonder if it's possible to train one's brain to improve oh. our, you know, cognitive ability. Oh. Well, we're going to be having a brain trainer. Talk to us about this much later on the show. All right, present day realities of climate change are forcing a rethink towards approach of development. Now, with realities, you know, of drought and desertification in the northeast, also with the drying up of the lake chart, now, if we must enhance energy and resource efficiency, then we must think green economy. The environment is everybody's business, and it is our responsibility to ensure a safe and cleaner environment for all, while also thinking of the economic benefits. Green economy and safe environments will be part of our discussion on the deal today. Thank you very much for joining us once again. My name is Riz Aguero. And my name is Suleiman Baba Jiao Usman. It's always a pleasure. Uh, moving on now, it's Christmas. It's already in the air. I can feel it. it, really. Because sometimes <laughs> when you go out in, you know, in the evening hours and you see the lights, oh, Christmas beautiful. trees they're everywhere, it's usually a compelling sight, trust me. And there's also one thing that reminds people of Christmas carols. Yes. Let's take this uh, Christmas carols uh, all the way from Bauchi. Beautiful rendition there, putting us in the festive season, which is just a few weeks ago. And still in line with that, we have a special guest joining us in the studio. She'll be talking to us on what she has, you know, coming for you when we're talking Christmas carol. Please help us welcome Abiodun Koya. She's an opera singer. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, for guys. For coming on Weekend Deal. Good morning. morning. How's it going? Great. Oh, my Great. gosh. It's so early. But... Is this you? <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's me. It's okay. me, live and direct. I'm okay. so excited and um, grateful to be here. Thank you guys for having me. Your program is amazing. Thank you, too, yeah. for coming. And your Absolutely. voice is amazing. Oh, you know, you. every time I see you perform on stage, I'm just amazed. And you oh. leave me spellbound. Oh wow! Your voice is breathtaking. Should I go on? Oh no, please no, 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 no. But seriously, how is it like being an opera singer? Oh. You're few in Nigeria. Yes. Um, first and foremost, you're gonna be very disciplined. It comes with a lot of discipline um, because the genre itself, the training, is so rigorous, mm. and so I just have to like maintain certain standards and like uh, food. Um, 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 what's it called? Um, I just have to like not be able to eat some. You avoid food, some, some certain foods and not drink certain drinks. Okay. Um, and I'm not supposed to shout and yell. Mm -hmm. I mean, but that's when not, you're singing, you um, yell. No, that's not yelling. Okay. Okay. That's okay. Not, since it's, it's, not, it's not called yelling. I don't know these things. Go ahead. Really? Okay. Then if you're singing is yelling, then you can yell. <laughs> okay. Okay. You now, can sing opera then. Anybody can yell. Yeah. Okay. Has it always been opera for you? Why opera, really? Um, I, I grew up listening to it. That was what I was um, introduced to at mm -hmm. an early age. Okay. And I grew up loving it and I took to it. You mean your parents were opera the way, singers they, as they, well? They, they played it in the house. Okay. 24-7. <laughs> mm. <24 /7. laughs> wow, okay, You know, you are really flying our flag so high internationally, performing in the White House, the most critic convention. That is huge. Now, how does that make you feel? I don't get big headed by that first and foremost. Are you I, sure? I really don't. I don't know how to do that. Mm -hmm. um, I don't get big headed with things like that. And also, like you know, people say, "Oh, you're so tall and beautiful." 
I mean, I appreciate that, but it doesn't do anything to but my hair. But you are beautiful. Thank, thank you. <laughs> but you know what I like to boast about is my cooking skills. Mm, really? Not really oh my gosh. gosh. <laughs> no, no. I, that's, I know. That's weird. I don't. I don't. I don't. Okay. It's not like me. But I love to talk about my cooking. I like to think I'm the best out there. Interesting. Okay. Yes. Now, you, we, you know we you have a concert coming up. Yay! Okay, Frankincense, right? Uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> talk to us about it. And okay. why here in Nigeria? Mm -hmm. Given also the fact that not many people appreciate this kind of uh, music. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, I'm making a conclusion. The word, appreciate. Change okay. the word. Maybe not many people know about it okay. like that, but they do appreciate It's not that popular. Once people get to have an opportunity to listen to it or hear that style of music, they fall in love with it. Even yeah. even babies okay. love, they respond to classical music. So what okay. should we expect come 17th of December? That's the big day. That's her big day. <laughs> it's, it's my first concert in Nigeria. Are you nervous? <laughs> I think I am. Okay. <laughs> so what should we expect? Uh, you should expect elegance, okay. some divaness going on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Are there other artists performing there there's, as well? There's the Frankincense Orchestra. Okay. There's the Frankincense Choir. Mm -hmm. uh, I have uh, Kunle Ajayi, mm. a great saxophonist. Yeah. Um, he's performing. We have the Lagos state jazz band okay. society mm -hmm. uh featuring and we have children's choir mm. um and then we're giving four awards to some um icons like okay. uh, mr sonny rabor mm. nike davies okay. uh sheik modek babi and dr alex where is it taking place intercontinental hotel time sunday december 17th okay. 5 p.m okay now i know that dress code you say people should black be on tie. black tie why black tie I, tuxedo, I want to know if you don't have your tuxedo don't even come near is that the, the culture uh, it's it's the style it's a okay. dress code <laughs> okay so <laughs> but of course you can wear your agbada like a okay. general basso uh, president of basso joy is going to wear his agbada Biodo, i know you're doing a remarkable job promoting opera music but if we must promote opera music in nigeria so it can be embraced more in nigeria what should we do differently what would you recommend to embrace classical opera, music yes. opera um you mean individuals or the government everybody I think individuals, especially people who have the means, should okay. support um, up-and-coming classical musicians. Okay. Um, believe it or not, there are talents out there. They want to do this. They're really talented. They have the potentials, uh, but they lack the support, you know, financial support. Okay. Only few have the opportunity to train outside okay. Nigeria, um, and so we need to have more exports like okay. that. Um, and and the government should give scholarships, you know. Well, and the rich folks, you reach out and be patrons to talents. Well, we definitely cannot end this conversation without hearing that operatic or like having that. Why should I even put it? We could hear you. We could start by hearing Oh, ah, no, 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 no. It's so terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want Ruth to laugh at judge. me this time around. <laughs> you, and I know don't you, you, you no, did a piece. Don't be mean. I won't laugh. Be nice. But okay. I would love to hear you. Okay. okay. Most especially the piece you did uh, for Nigeria. Oh, Lift Up yeah. Nigeria. Yeah. Top Nigeria, exactly. Yes, okay. yes. We can do that. Uh, yes, so it goes like this. It's a song I wrote for our dear country. It's called Lift Up Nigeria. Um, so it's got two verses. I'll just sing one verse. I will lift up Nigeria with my voice, hmm. with my voice. <laughs> I will lift up Nigeria with my voice, with my voice. Hi everybody! Yeah, that's a talent. We here. have a deal with you. Right? Classical talent. We here. have a deal with you. You have a right? fine mezzo soprano or soprano, wow, should I wow, say? Wow! Oh wow! I, I, I hope we didn't spoil that. See, I much. brought it out. Okay. No, give me credit. Hold on. Thank you. Give me Thank credit. You. I brought yeah, it out of my mind. But but uh, Abiyu, uh, let's take this now. You are also a songwriter. Yeah. You I wrote are that a poet. Song. Composer. A composer. Yeah. You are also a philanthropist. A you are a cook, I'm of a course. Great, I'm a great one, by the way. What don't you do? I don't rap. You don't rap. No, I don't. But rap. how do you manage to combine combine all of this together? My my schedule is very 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 tight. I I thank God. Um, I'm a very energetic person. Very very energetic. Like sometimes I feel like I have three people inside. Of me. Are you serious? Like strong men, and not just like three. I'm telling you. So, like, like when I was in primary school, I used, okay. to, I used to beat up boys. I'm serious. But not anymore. Not, not, mm, who knows? 
Let's take you back memory lane. When you relocated from Nigeria in 2001, you know, mm -hmm. to the U.S., if you had the power, you know, to change anything, looking mm -hmm. back today, what would it be? Hmm. I really don't know. I really don't know. I just miss. I just miss those days of mm -hmm. growing up. It's completely different. The atmosphere smelled differently. Even now, it's Christmas. You're not really knowing it. It's Christmas. Mm -hmm. You know. I remember those days that my mom would take me to see that Christmas and we'd buy stuff, and the air used to smell. Christmas. 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 Especially yeah. Christmas rice. Yeah. You could perceive it when uh, it's Yeah, exactly. It's just something in the air. <laughs> something about the air. There was something in the air, but I don't know. You know, I, I just want a better Nigeria. We have the mm. potential. Um, I want our leaders to put in more effort, you know, to have... I mean, I, of course, they have the love of this country, yes. you know, but we want to see you do more. Okay. And we want to also see you encourage diasporans like me to come home. Okay. I've faced some challenges, you know, but the grace and the favor of God has seen me through, okay. really. Otherwise, if not for that, I would have been frustrated. At some point, I was. Yeah. I was discouraged. I was going to just go back. Uh, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. But do you have the uh, younger ones that are looking up to you and maybe you are currently mentoring? I do, uh, but not in Nigeria. Okay. Uh, and it's a desire of mine to uh, have a music. I mean, a school of music in Nigeria. In Nigeria. Interesting. Okay. Yes. So, hey, you know, it it takes a lot to do that. I would like to have that and see that. Just a reminder, okay. very quickly, before you let we let you go, uh -huh. what should Nigerians uh, talking about your Frankincense concert? Tell Nigerians about it. Okay. So Nigeria. The Frankincense concert is taking place on Sunday, December 17th at the Intercontinental Hotel. It's at 5 p.m. Dress code is black tie. There are tickets. We're actually almost sold out, really. We have mm. few tickets left. So come one, come all. Come show me your love and support. I'd like to see you there. God okay. bless you. I wish you could be there to show you the same love that yes, you're showing us like right that. now. Like and then we wish you the very best. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. There you have it, Abiodun Koya, the one and only. We're proud of her. Let's go on a break right now. We still have more for you on Weekend Deal. So, my advice is, don't go anywhere. Nigeria, lay Africa, whoa. This is your girl again. Che girl. And you are watching Weekend Deal. That is Africa's biggest deal. Africa's most gawam deal. Africa's very chingomish deal. Without it, it's short. I don't know. So you gotta stay there. Don't change the channel. Keep watching. If not, you're a hot air west. You don't want to be that. You get it? Yes. Bye bye. <laughs> to have you back stay with us on the deal and thank you for staying on the dial now let's talk about the environment with a population of over 170 million people in nigeria i'm amazed at our instincts for survival irrespective of the odds now reports have it around the world that very soon there will be a shift from fossil reliance economy to green economy are we prepared in nigeria well green economy and safe environment is what we're going to be talking about right now and our guest is already seated please help us welcome the director general nesria dr lawrence chidi anukam thank you so much always a pleasure to have you with thank us thank you for having me so a lot of people have argued that you know 
um, going green, talking about green economy, is not an adventure for Nigeria, but for, you know, other richer economies, either, uh, richer countries. Do you agree with that? No, I don't think so. Okay. Uh, the green economy is like the other side of the coin when okay. we talk about sustainable development. Okay. Green economy means for us to make sure that all our economic activity are going to be in harmony with nature. If we continue aspect of unsustainable pattern of consumption and production, yeah. then that's not good for the economy. Okay. And it's not a circular system of economy. Okay. So green economy is the way to go now. It's not just for Nigeria, okay. not just for that developing country, but for the entire world. It's good for us. It's good for the region and it's good for the world. Mm. Okay, I'm sure they definitely have their reasons, the critics now, for, I mean, saying that uh, this is not an, I mean, an area we can venture into. But are we really paying lip service to this idea of going green? Or are there you know, tangible uh, things we can look forward to to say, yes, we are certainly making a move in the right direction when we talk about a green economy in Nigeria? Yeah, yeah. yeah is it, is it, let's just the name, <coughs> excuse me, when we use the name green economy, to some people it sounded like one new special concept. No, as I said, green economy is just a concept. Mm. We talked about uh, sustainable development. In green economy, let me repeat, in green economy, we are following a uh, development that does not harm the environment. Mm. Environment is our natural stock. The food we eat, our shelter, the air we breathe, the raw material for our industry, everything is coming from the environment. So the green economy concept is where make sure you don't overexploit the resources, don't overuse the resources, and make sure that you do something for the future generations to hold on by, which is essentially the sustainable development. And and we'll get to try. It's not something new that in our traditional system for the forties in some culture where this at uh, certain time you are not allowed to go to the river mm. or you're not allowed to go to the farm mm. you will leave our our uh, agricultural system for some five years for the, uh, the the land the soil to regenerate before we come back to that you remember yes that is essentially sustainable development mm. that is the aspect of green economy in our indigenous system but if we must sustain a green economy we must reduce environmental risk and Absolutely. ecological scarcities, where do we begin? Absolutely. Well, this is where we're coming. There must be real control. The government, the system must have a framework of regulations, and this is where environmental governance comes in. There must be a balance. The system must make sure that whatever you are doing in all the sectors, we must make sure there's a balance what you are doing hmm. and how you control the environment. So it's necessary for us to have the laws, and also for the community, or what we call the regulated community. Well, there's, well, one thing, by the laws. there's one thing to have a law. Implementation is another Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. Well, that's also back to uh, the need for put you as the media, and us as the government, and then the regulated community for everybody to be on board. That collective responsibility for all hmm. makes for good environmental governance. Okay. And in your recent event coming up, which you theme environmental governance, a key to achieving green economy. That's right. Talk to us about it. Well, we are having uh, our 11th National Stakeholders Forum. You know, and you also know, every year the agency organizes uh, a national forum. Yeah. And we normally make it to be a public discourse. We select some topical issue where we discuss uh, environmental problems and challenges. And the outcome of such meeting always support in the implementation of our programs. This year's own, we're looking at, uh, as rightly mentioned, we're looking at environmental governance as a key to achieving green economy. As we said earlier, if we do all that, if you come up with a uh, new, new concept of green economy, but if we don't have very good environmental governance framework in place, mm. we can't achieve that. And environmental governance means rule of law, mm. effective compliance, good awareness system and for everybody to be on board then and you, can achieve the green economy. you you were actually at the you know uh, public hearing the national assembly seeking to amend 
the uh, Nesria Act. Talk to us about it. It would be. The, uh, it's all part of the environmental governance. We realized that the Nesria Act, which was made in 2007, actually it was the first law uh, that was signed by our late president, uh, Yaradua, on the office. Oh. So this year is like 10 years since uh, Nesra came on board. Okay. But over the years in the implementation of the law, it was realized that uh, uh, from time to time, we had these issues in court where before a judge said, okay, um, we've seen the violation, evidence has proven that uh, this company or this uh, facility is a corporate. The sanction. You look at the law, the law says uh, if a company commits this offense by the environment, it has to have a sanction not more than. Hmm. So that, that, that causes a problem. There was a case where a judge said, no, 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 my hands are tied. For a company to commit this level of environmental offense or damage and said not more than. So the amendment, the key amendment to the act now, uh, it has passed third reading, National Assembly, and National Assembly is really the one we, we are appreciative of all the members who are pushing for this. The, the amendment now is where, instead of that, m not more than, become not less than. Hmm. So it's now a uh, responsibility of the judge okay. to weigh the gravity of the offense, okay. the responsibility of the, of, the, of the company or the corporate, and then put the appropriate sanctions. Okay, and I know you're also collaborating with the Nadron Police to monitor environmental crimes. Sure. So, well, let's look at, you know, the rural communities. We know that their livelihood depends largely on nature. Sure. And if we're talking sensitization, if we're talking green economy, everybody must get involved. Absolutely. What are the benefits and how would they benefit? I'm talking about those in the rural communities. Right. How would they benefit from this? Well, that, that's the same. Uh, uh, you, you mentioned rightly, the key thing there is the awareness. You see, the local community, there's a few problems. And they need to be to more like sensitization. Take it, for example, even the cooking they're doing, yeah. where you do with very minimal ventilation. You have family of four, five, six. You use uh, wood in the same room. Mm. Everybody's breathing the smoke and all that. That's a big problem, serious problem. So the awareness is how to get them away from that. Then also uh, the issue of, uh, even when they have their local river system we are operating from, some people from the village may decide, uh, I need to catch lot more fish. Okay. You start using some chemicals. You are right there damaging the river system. And then the problem of the environment is that it's easier to damage than to remediate. Yes. So okay. the best you can is apply caution, avoid the damage in the first instance. In fact in some cases you can't even remediate anyone. Hmm. Hmm. So the awareness more for the rural people is for them to realize God has blessed them who have this natural environment, the food we eat and all that from our uh, local farms, let's maintain that sustainability. So the awareness is key for the local people. Okay, what about the involvement of the private sector? Yeah, the, it, we, we can't do environmental protection without the private sector. Mm. The private sector has a key role to play. And environmental governance too means total participation. It's mm. a participatory process. The private sector, they are very strong stakeholders. Because the private sector is where you have the industry. The private sector is using the raw material. Mm -hmm. The private sector, through the activities of their industry, they're also the ones that are, quote unquote, emitting obnoxious substances for those who don't have the uh, uh, anti pollution technology. So the private sector has a role to play to make sure they are using the right materials, they are using less polluting technology. And there is clean technology if you want it, or other aspects of uh, environmental uh, uh, protection uh, technologies. And at the same time, obeying the laws of the land. The but will, environment. will funding be a challenge if we have to remedy what has gone wrong? We well, yeah, we are. I mean, uh, uh, there's always problem of funding. Okay. But we will we'll not shy away from that reality. But what is important, as I said, as much as possible, say prevention is better than cure yes. because when you want to cure you're going to spend a lot more 
Yeah. Well, how, well, how would you advise Nigerians? You know, there are things we do knowingly and unknowingly when we talk about damaging the environment. Yeah. What would you advise Nigerians? My, 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 my humble advice is that the environment is our natural stuff. We live in the environment. Yeah. Mm. We grow in the environment. Our business in the environment. The air we breathe. You know when you looked up, I was wondering. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, you know, you know. As soon as they call our, when they say our common heritage, you know, our common stock, mm. our commonality in nature, is all for us. So there is need for us individually in our only two ways. If I have to dispose my garbage, mm. if I have to use my generator, let me make sure it's service. If I have to use my car. Mm. So it's properly service. All those little little things we do. And if I have to build my house, mm. because I'm properly placed somewhere, let me not that go against the rules of the land. Either to build in flood plains and all that. If we all do our little roads individually, collectively we're doing a long way to protect the environment. And I'm sure this is exactly what informed the uh, uh, Green Core Initiative. That's right. Our Green Core Initiative is essentially to make you, you. And everybody, irrespective of your primary responsibility or, 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 or professional calling, to be part of the uh, Green Corps. It is like what we call now, we'll be like uh, uh, whistleblowers on environment. Uh -huh. <laughs> ah, Are we okay. going to have that? Yeah, no, it's already there. Okay. Yeah, it's already there. We've launched it uh, a few years ago, we've launched it in some states, but the idea is to bring it on board everywhere. We can have judges, policemen, the, the media, everybody. So where you see there's a problem, you know, okay, uh, this is not right. You know, it's like war against indiscipline. Mm. This is like war against environmental indiscipline, so to mm. say. You is know. there a reward for this thing? We, the reward is your recognition. Okay. You know, we, 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 we uh, the, the framework is in place. Where the idea is this pattern in such a way that, you know, they organize themselves. They will do the formal launching in states, and then from time to time there will be Meetings, but they on their own are really. Are people responding? To we, that? Yeah, we are. We've, we've launched, as I said, we've launched. I think we've launched in uh, Imo, we've launched in Abuja, we've launched, we've launched in Rivers. The idea is to, uh, as much as possible that it be everywhere. Well, thank you very much. Uh, it's it's very glaring that uh, there's nothing we can do without our environment. We are the environment, and the environment is us. And then this uh, green economy is central to achieving the 2030 uh, sustainable development uh, agenda. Absolutely. So absolutely. I mean, you 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 hit me that report. Uh, <laughs> you you can't achieve the sustainable development goals without the green economy. Oh, thank the you. The green economy is that. But I think I also have to mention quickly that for our event on the. Tuesday, okay. the, the, the 12th and 13th of uh, this, uh, December, people are coming. A lot of people from different parts of the world will be there. Where? And, uh, at, at Nikon and Luxury, you know, usual place. In Abuja. Okay. In Abuja. Okay. So we we'll look forward to seeing you guys. And then uh, the, it's open. A lot okay. of knowledge. Let us understand this wow. green economy. Thank you, government. thank you, thank you very much. Thank we you really appreciate it. And we, we wish you a wonderful, you know, a successful deliberation at your event. Thank you very much. And we have been speaking with uh, Dr. Lawrence Chidi Anukan. He is the Director General CEO, National Environmental Standards and Regulations Agency, Nesria. Let's go on a break. After that, we still have more for you on Weekend Deal. <laughs> black is often associated with something dark or not pleasant so using it to describe a day might not be comfortable for some persons nevertheless 
This is a word widely used now to describe a certain period of time when commercial activity is at its peak. Um, from the little I know of Black Friday, it's usually when things get cheap, you come to buy things at a cheaper rate. That they give you a discount of 70%, some other offer 60%. But that's a little I know more about Black Friday. It's done all over. All over the world where there are some time they set aside to, to, for people who have not been buying to buy at a cheaper time so that they could enjoy, especially at this festive period. Generally, I think it's good for Black Friday. Okay. Then another way, Black Friday, I don't know the meaning people give to it though. Oh. There are divergent views in history on how the day came to be. One view cited the era when the gold market collapsed in 1870 in the United States, leading to financial crisis, while another says the name originated in Philadelphia after the heavy and disruptive pedestrian and vehicle traffic that occurred on the day after Thanksgiving. Another school of thought, however, opined that Black Friday is an informal name for the fourth Thursday following Thanksgiving in November, which begins the United States Christmas shopping season since 1952. Since then, the day has been linked together with the idea of Santa Claus parades celebrating Thanksgiving. However, in recent times all over the world, the term Black Friday has metamorphosed somewhat into a season whereby major retail business outlets entice shoppers out of their homes with unimaginable percentages slash in the prices of products in order to boost sales. I do patronize before now, but unfortunately this uh, Black Friday, I was unable to. The last time I tried, as I was opening the site, they keep asking so many questions. I don't have that patience to, so I have to just log out. I saw my daughter buying bags. I was saying that maybe I'll go and look for a deep freezer, a small one to get. But I have not really because I haven't had time. Nigerians have also come to embrace the culture of this promotion few years back with online retailers being at the forefront of advertising products with considerable slashes in their prices. Despite his entrance into the Nigerian market, how many Nigerians are aware of this new trend of shopping? No, I've not heard of anything Black Friday. I'm just surprised as you asked me about Black Friday. I just heard people talking about Black Friday and I was busy going somewhere where they were saying it. So I really didn't pay attention. So I don't know anything about it. I don't know. Maybe because I have a lot of things on my head. I have so many things like that's been stopping me from trying to like check most of those things. For people who don't really have, is an opportunity for them to patronize. But for me, I really don't think they bring those prices down. I don't think they bring them down and it's an error. The question of quality and durability comes to mind, having seen the exciting new offers with reduced prices. From experience, I could say I've not experienced any bad thing in Black Friday because most of the things one buy from Black Friday, they're quite good things and they're new product as well. So uh, to me, I can't say they have experienced anything bad about Black Friday. So I don't think they're low standard. Who doesn't like uh, cheap things? Everybody will surely fall in love with cheaper things and they always go for it in as much as the quality is good. So there's nothing bad in it. Most times you find out that you check the prices before then and you check on the sales of the Black Friday. They're almost the same thing. So I don't see any reason why. If you want to do Black Friday, you want to do sales, get to it, do sales, let's know you're doing sales. I look at it as a wolf. I believe in going for what I want. Because when you look at all those things online, they not really, some of them know what you really wanted to buy. But what is cheap, so you want to go for it. So I want to go for what I want to buy. And I'm, not, I'm going to have guarantee for it. Usually promoted towards the end of the calendar year, the rave of Black Friday has continued to gain momentum in the country and shoppers can only be happy and thrilled to ask for more.
All right, I moved the wrong belay, but this time around, your pocket will speak. And this is why a lot of people will opt for Black Friday. But I like it though, I like discount, but this is not something you want to try because who, who, of the traffic. Yes, who doesn't like discounts? Uh, but the, the reality is sometimes when the time comes for you to click on some an item that you like, then the traffic, it will take time for you to be able to purchase a particular product. And before you know it, sometimes somebody has actually, you know, bought it. That's but the, the most actually. important thing is the fact that if you can't have access to it, I'm sure you have something at a lesser price than the original price. Mm. I don't get a lot. God, you win. Music, okay. Beckham, let's take speaker box. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy that, seriously. Yeah, definitely. And then I know Nigerians are actually looking forward to one particular collaboration between a producer and one artist. You know what that is? The Banj and the Coco Master. Hmm. You know, looking at them back, you know, in that music, yeah. it's, it brought back memories, you know, how they were yeah. very good team and all of that. And the band, did you see yourself there? <laughs> <laughs> no, the band don't jump up now, have you? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> well, how time flies. And talking about time, time is of essence. Time, some say, is money. So let's take this feature on time management. Adage that says, a stitch in time saves mine. In other words, every individual and organization have specific goals to achieve in life. For this to be effective and efficient involves planning, teamwork, and particularly time management. Time, they say, is money. Time is precious and waits for nobody. The way one manages determines the results one gets. This simply implies that in everyday life, the way one maximizes his or her time is crucial to the day's output. So what is time management? Time management is all about planning your time, how to efficiently utilize your time. There's no way of talking of time management without looking at certain um, qualities about time in itself. And for me, I believe time is something that is given to everyone equally. By that I mean you have 24 hours, I have 24 hours. Um, there's no way of taking maybe four hours from your time and then giving somebody else or... So that is a common thing. Uh, time is also something you cannot recycle. What I mean is, once you waste time, time wasted can never be regained. So if these things are true, if these elements about time are true, it only behoves each person uh, to use time wisely. And so the ability to do that and produce a lot of results, positive results that is, in the shortest possible time, you know, maximizing your time for greater benefits is what I believe by time management. All over the world, the precious nature of time is not only recognized, it is also highly respected. This is so because the result of time management most time leaves sour taste in the mouth of the bad manager. The importance of time management in a workplace situation cannot, therefore, be overemphasized, particularly when the demand of higher output or result is high. Planning is key. Prioritizing is key. And who says you can't do a to-do list while at work? You know, for the particular day, you go through it at intervals and see, check what you've achieved and what you haven't, and um, avoid distractions. In Nigeria, the essence of time management is not usually treated with seriousness, hence the mentality of what has generally come to be referred to African time. African time... Yeah. Personally, I don't even believe in it because I believe that people should learn how to keep to time. That's African time is something we have to do away with because it's affecting us negatively. So we have to, I don't believe in it. If you're giving an appointment 2 o'clock, make sure that you are there at least 5 minutes to 2. Time management here means different things to different people. I manage my time basically by planning. I plan my time when I wake up every day, I plan what I want to do for that particular day. So based on that, I assign all my tasks. So with that, I know that, okay, this, this, this is what I'm going to cover for the day. You manage your time properly, you meet the dividends there. When you are supposed to work, you work. When you're supposed to relax, you relax. 
So when you are supposed to work and you are playing, you definitely meet your Waterloo. As an artist, I have a program for the every day. I have a lineup. Let me just say the timetable. I think to for even though for the day, for the for the whole year. So you know that's now to be achieved. So by the time I do not achieve today, I say oh, by tomorrow I continue with it. So I plan my time. To ensure efficient use of time, here are some helpful tips. Be organized, maintain control of time, exploit teamwork spirit, set goals for yourselves, finally, maintain balance in your lifestyle. Above all, remember that time is money and cannot wait for anybody. Someone said the key is not spending time but in investing it. You know, if you don't manage your time well, someone else will help you waste it wisely. Definitely. And I, I think the best thing for one to, you know, technique rather, for that one should engage in terms of uh, talking about that time management is do a list for yourself. A daily, you know, list that, okay, this is what I want to do today by the end of the day. And at, at the end of the day, look, reflect on that, look at the things you were able to do and the things you were not able to do. And I think with that, you should be able to, you know, answer some patterned questions that borders mm. on how well you have managed. And you know, this is rush hour. I'm talking um, of rush period, yeah. end of the year. People are doing checks. What did I achieve? What didn't I achieve? Yeah. And all of that. But the good thing is it's never too late to start. Definitely. All right, let's take Tamari Festival, a celebration of arts, culture, and music. Let's see how it went down. Tamari Festival getting bigger and better. Mm. You, this time around, what I enjoyed most is the fact that uh, we have more artists come yeah. around. Yeah, Gary Amita, he came from Ghana, all the way from Ghana, and it was really a wonderful experience. We mm. met new friends. and Tamari is just one platform that connects people, and yeah. I'm looking forward to the next year edition. I know it will be better than this one, even bigger, so well done to the organizers. And next time, I'm definitely going with you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's okay, go to break. I'll Yes, let's uh, take this break right now and after that we see have so much for you on Weekend Deal. Nigeria lay Africa whoa this is your girl again. Che girl. And you are watching Weekend Deal. That is Africa's biggest deal. Africa's most gawam deal. Africa's very chingomish deal. Without it, a shot I don't know. So you gotta stay there. Don't change the channel. Keep watching. If not, you are a hot air west. You don't want to be that. You get it? Yes. Bye bye. Humans possesses the cognitive abilities to learn, form concepts, understand, recognize, think, and communicate. It is said that the greatest power of the human brain is its ability to focus on one thing for an extended period of time. But most times, people struggle to concentrate and when you cannot concentrate, everything you do is harder and takes longer than you like. If you cannot focus, you may think that is just the way your brain works and that there is not much you can do about it. Before the emergence of social media, text messages, mobile phones, all the ads we see daily, human brain was taking everything in and you don't actually do several things at once. Your brain quickly toggles back and forth between tasks. You can do unconscious tasks such as work and talk at the same time. Once it gets more complicated than that, you sacrifice the efficiency of one tax for another. Does the brain need some kind of exercise to solve problems, retain information or make decisions as the human would want? Are there reasons for lack of concentration? Maybe there are also techniques that can increase mental alertness. Yes, uh, indeed. Uh, and to talk further about the benefits uh, and techniques of maximizing the human ability to increase mental alertness, we have joined us in the studio, Emmanuel Ojo. He is a brain trainer. You're welcome to our studios, Emmanuel. Thank you. Good morning. 
Okay, now let's uh, get the basics uh, so that we ensure that we are on the same page. Yeah. Mm, uh, cognitive training, uh, brain training, what is it all about from your own point of view? Okay, simply put, brain training is a scientific process of getting the brain rewired for, with a view for a better and a smarter performance. You understand? Brain training is born out of a recent discovery that contrary to what we used to believe, the brain can actually change and the brain can actually improve. What are the benefits of having the brain trained? Okay, now as I said, I told him now, I said something about the cognitive skills. We have seven cognitive skills of the brain which helps every human, no matter the sphere or no matter what you are involved in, no matter what you do in life. We have the attention skill of the brain which helps us to focus on a particular task to get the best out of it. Mm. There are many people that can't focus on a thing, especially in this part of the world where, for example, you send a child to get something and before he gets there, I've seen a lot of things mm. that has distracted him from getting what he's supposed to get, what you sent him to do in the first place. We have the processing speed. A computer is really rated by, most times, by the processing speed as in of such a machine. Now, a processing, the processing speed of the brain helps us to process information fast. Okay. For example, you have someone that, ha that has, for example, maybe is is a special kid and all. You ask him his name and it takes like some minutes. Sometimes it's even the parents that get to tell the person asking the person's name. They get to tell him as in on behalf of the boy or on behalf of the child. It so is the processing speed of the yeah. brain that is not fast enough for him to decode the information. It's already in the brain, but the rate at which the information is brought out of the brain for immediate response, for example, in the, in the example I just gave now, is the processing speed of the brain. So people who multitask are Yes, people who right. multitask. As I said earlier on, the efficiency of the cognitive skills of the brain determines the performance, what you bring out, the efficiency in all you do. Mm -hmm. So there's a level you get to where you have really developed the skills of the brain through some exercises we'll be discussing later that can make you to multitask. But even at that, you are concentrating at a task at a time. If you really check it, you are doing one thing at a time, even multitaskers and all. You get to know that it's only one task. They are really, in reality, in, re in the real sense of it, they are concentrating on at a time. Okay, now, Emmanuel, it's good what you're saying, but there are instances whereby you kept something somewhere and within a matter of seconds, you, you've forgotten where you kept that uh, thing which you, you, you did. And then I just want you to establish or link the, you know, stress, focus, and memory. Okay. Now, to start with, stress is, is, a, is a situation where your brain tells your body you are tired. Hmm. It is your brain that actually tells your body you are tired. Now, man, you need to rest now. And you start feeling your, your, your you bones are not, yes, <laughs> that high. You need to really rest now. You've really stressed yourself. So, with stress in view, you can't hmm. focus on anything. Yeah. Okay. That's why you get to work and sometimes you're already dozing. Because what your brain has already told your body that man, you can't write anything now, you can't do anything now because you are tired. Your hands start, you start to feel pain, you start to feel headaches. Is an information that the brain has communicated to the body. As we all know, the brain is a vital organ that helps in the coordination of the processes of the of the body. Mm -hmm. So stress, with stress in view, you can't really with stress, you can't really focus on the task. Okay. And that's why many people they get when when sometimes you get people that are involved in accidents because what they are stressed up and they didn't get time to rest. So can you fight it? Yeah. Can you fight it? Yes. The best way to relieve yourself of stress is to rest. Find time to rest. If you are driving now and you feel you are very tired and all, pack and rest. Even if it's ten minutes, hmm. the brain shuts Need down. Yes. Rest. Then it comes back up again. Then you are normal. You're so okay. So what daily activities, brain um, exercise rather, do we need to do to keep the brain active? Okay. Some of the skill, some of the exercises we we really need to do. We have these games. We have chess. It's a very very good game for it's the a brain. Game. Yes, very mental game and very technical. You understand? If you are a good chess player, they love that means so a lot of people. I don't know skills. how to play chess. Oh, how okay, we have are you. Uh -huh, okay. Okay. That especially maybe for old people now in yeah. the villages, we know that one is a common game for yeah, many people. Yeah, we have people that play game. yes, the traditional game. We have instruments. If you can learn any musical instruments, it really, really helps. Yes. Playing the piano, playing the drums, playing the guitar, you learn a lot. I play instruments. 
You understand? Okay. So I can say I'm smart. So that these are forms <laughs> of exercise. What about um, as in t- you know try to recollect memory thinking? Does it help? Yes, it helps because for example, now I talked about playing instruments. We also have learning languages, learning different languages. It helps you with sound codes. It helps you with the working memory. The working memory is that memory is that short term memory that helps you to hold an information in immediate awareness and being able to provide it when it's needed. Is it all about focus, really? Not, it's not, it's not really all about focus. I said there are seven cognitive skills. Okay. I mentioned attention, we have the working memory, we have the processing speed, we have the long-term memory, ability to remember, that, and that's, 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 that one is really connected to our old people, hmm. understand? Like we have, it, we have many people that have come, as in, have, have trained, that we are directors, they started having issues with the memory because they were aging already, 50-something, 60-something. You need to get the brain back, back by exercises, you understand? Oh. Before, you, before you forget that the slogan for NT is you can't beat the rich, you need to really, need to really work on your brain, okay. you understand? Give it more time. And you know, Mr. Ojo, yeah. you're right what you're saying. A lot of people have said that as you get there now, you tend to forget. Yeah. And uh, is that symptom of dementia now? Yes. And they said that, according to studies, that for uh, every four seconds, you know, there's a detection of dementia globally. And by the year 2050, about 150 million people will have dementia worldwide. Should we be worried? Uh, with brain training now, I don't think we should be worried. Okay. You understand? I mentioned some things you can do at home. We have professional test centers where you can test your brain and you get to know the skills of the brain that really need to be worked on, you understand, as you age, especially the memory. Old people, there's a saying in my, where I come from that when you start aging, you become a baby again. You tend yes, to forget a lot yes. of things and all. So you need to really, with brain training in view now, I think we, we, we are, we've discovered something very vital to our survival and to our being alert mentally. So we bring okay, so but you only it. mentioned the games. Are there yeah. other mental activities we should do aside games? Okay, trying to, like, giving a set of numbers, for example, you list 10 numbers, and you had, maybe you, you give yourself a task that I want to add one to these numbers, without actually saying 5 plus 1, 6, okay. 6 plus 1. You just mentioned the added sums, like 6, 7, depending on the list of numbers and what you're adding to it. It really helps with the brain. Or giving yourself a box of numbers, Telling yourself, putting yourself on uh, on pressure, maybe with your phone, you put it 20 seconds, I want to circle every four in this set of numbers, and I want to get it done. There are basic things that you can really do to help your brain. Calculators and a lot of things are really, have really, as in, yeah. how will I say it, they've really been yeah. detrimental to us, um, as in our mental alertness. Yeah. We really need to start doing many things with our brain. Mm. There's, a, there's, a, there's a research that says... The human being, average human being, or w- most of us, we use less than 5% of our brain. Computers and all, smartphones and all, has really, as in, has I'm really I'm affected sure our if being if a lot. If allow you, you say, people should stop using calculators here <laughs> and there. But yeah, it's a good thing. <laughs> anyway, let, let's talk about the, uh, you know, how the brain evolves uh, w- with aging. What, what really declines and what really improves? Okay, with aging... Yeah. As I said earlier on, your memory begins to decline, your working memory, your long-term memory, your visual processing is a skill of the brain. Mm. Mm. You understand? Let me explain with this. This is something we can relate with. You walk, maybe you were about to enter into your house and there was power outage and you know where your candle is, you know where your match is. You are not seeing with your eyes at mm. that particular moment. You are seeing with your brain. Yes. Because you know how to walk around the TV, walk around the chairs to get to where you are going to. That's the visual processing. You understand? So with time, all this starts to decline. Then auditory processing, yes, that's phonemic uh, as an ability to understand the sound codes in words. And this really affects it affects people with learning disabilities. Uh, like dyslexia. You understand the ability, the inability to where people that find trouble reading, okay. they mm. find it very hard to read, which is associated with dysgraphia, mm. ability to write, dyscalculia, ability to calculate, and all. So, with when when you are aging, certain skills of the brain begin to depreciate. As okay. I said, the visual processing and your long-term memory, the ability to recall from your knowledge bank what you've okay. learned over the years. Okay. So, with brain training and with some of these exercises I just mentioned, you can bring up your brain. And you know, okay. Mr. Ojo, you yeah. just mentioned dyslexia it's yes. actually linked more it's more common with children yes and so when we look at children in terms of b- brain training we see our children spend lots of hours in school and even this after school lesson now which 
works better? Should okay. they be engaged more intellectual activities or the playful activities? Which should help them? Okay, better? I think there's a liberal approach to dyslexic children, and I want to also say because we notice that a lot of children are the ones having no i'm not just talking about dyslexia children yeah, okay. i'm talking about generally generally because yes. it's not only children yes. our parents will say uh when i was in school i used to take the first position and most times was that true is it like <laughs> <laughs> most times it's a lie because <laughs> these things especially dyslexia can be the one of the major causes is that it's very genetic yes mm. if you have it that means maybe someone down the line had it you understand so like dyslexic children now what they can do brain training can really help them because it's certain skills of the brain that are deficient that's why as in they are dyslexic and it's very very vital for them for a test to be run early you understand it's not a disease that can be cured you mm. can get a professional as in it can be person, managed. Yes, can be managed, can be remediated. Well, so, Emmanuel, is there a ceiling or a limit to which one can train his or her brain? I don't think there's a limit. For now, with my experience in this job, yeah. you understand, you can you can train your brain, train certain skills of the brain over time, over time, over time. Especially if you find out with the test that you do and all, and you find out maybe you say you are still having attention problems. There are different approaches to getting the skills better. Okay. I'm just curious, so does yeah. thinking help or does it depreciate the brain? Okay, thinking positively. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Because thinking I think a lot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now thinking positively, positively okay. helps. Positively yeah, though. yeah. But so when you start ahead. thinking that you have a dick, that means you are you are really. All of us, we have. I won't say we all have problems, okay. but you understand. You have to see the positive side. Of it so that your body can what can I would like to function positively towards getting that problem or what you have solved. You understand? So when you think negatively, you have a dick, and hmm. that's not is not speaking well for the brain. You understand? Okay, now le let's look at um, diet, uh, nutrition, or, or supplements. Is there anything that can help okay. the functioning of the brain? It's known all over. It's just God will help us in this part of the world. Here we the band, the rest. You understand? Well, why but are you making <laughs> that way? <laughs> what I'm saying now is that we need to really take a lot of vegetables. Okay. You know, the doctors. So the I'm a brain trainer. I'm a psychologist. Yes. Yeah. Band yeah. <laughs> yeah, it helps, but we really need to okay. because, like, if you take a lot of carbohydrates now, yeah. it leads to a lot of sugar in your body, mm -hmm. yeah. and that leads to being hyperactive. That's why someone that is autistic now. You, you see them, you don't really give them sugary things because if you get, they can scatter the studio in less than five minutes, you understand? So your diet really goes a long way. Take a lot of vegetables, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Be sure. very, very conscious of what you take into your body, you understand? All this affects the processes. Okay, the at day. what point should one seek a professional advice? When you start, that's, that's why we advise parents because most parents will say, ah, me, I've grown and no, I've, uh, I've achieved something in life, at least, but my children, be very close to your children. Don't leave the, 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 the academic work or the social life of your children to the ends of maybe the, the house help mm -hmm. or lesson teachers or the teachers. Be very, very involved. Early detection of certain deficiencies in these skills really helps. You understand? From five, from the age of five to 15 is mm -hmm. a really good time to really work on the cognitive skills of any child. Mm -hmm. And with that, true life, that child can really do well in many skills and can do well in anything. You understand? It's not even about academics alone. Mm. Now, we have a lot of sports people. Cristiano Ronaldo, Messi, when you look at them, you know that their processing speed is, is, is mm. way up there. Mm. Before they see someone coming, they know where to dribble yeah, to true. and know. Yes, yeah, it's all about. Go, go John O.B. Mikel. Yes, 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 John O.B. So Mikel. on a final yeah, exactly. note now, we're about to let you go. Yeah. What's your general advice, briefly, to people on okay. training? My general advice is, number one, get tested professionally. Understand mm. to know what is really wrong, to know how, as in the skill of you can you will even know. You understand? I mentioned the short term memory thing and all that when you are peeping into someone's jota, maybe mm. while someone mm. is dictating, that means you need to work on your short term memory. You understand? You need to get tested and know what is really wrong and make sure that you eat well. You understand? And when Brain you training works. Easily. When you forget things easily, yes. Brain training works and it's a very welcome development. I'm very happy about it because I've trained a lot of people and I've seen a lot of improvements. Right. Even the so-called special children, I've seen a lot of them improve. We've had a lot of testimonies from parents about how the grades of their children skyrocketed. 
in quotes you okay. understand yeah so there is hope and you know why i asked when when you forget things is because sometimes i tend to forget so i'm actually advising <laughs> myself no you can you can and, miss and me the truth is i've got the training yeah, <laughs> yeah Manuel, seriously I all think right I thank need, you I need, so much i need to come for a session yes yes but yes. i'm not paying no <laughs> no i've met you now so we can really negotiate and uh, see how we work thank out you very like much guys. Manuel yeah. Ojo. Yeah. we have to let you go okay, he's a master you. brain trainer and yeah. well done i've thank learned you. so much thank you okay we've been talking about brain training benefits feeds and techniques of maximizing human abilities to increase mental alertness our brains are provided to function properly so our actions and inactions can cause it to be less productive the ball is in your court all right let's go on a break we'll be back so stay with us <laughs> It's time to go. Thank you so much for being part of the deal today. We'll see you tomorrow, 7 a.m. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.